This is going to be the final video in the series for audio, chapter seven, voice work and UI sounds. And while I will show you how to implement a little bit of voice work, we're not really going to go too far into actually recording stuff with that. There's other videos out there. <clears throat> we're just going to talk mostly about implementing sounds and specifically UI sounds in our Unreal projects. So UI sounds are super important, even though they're overlooked really easily, because if they're implemented correctly, you don't notice them. But it's important to have UI sounds in your games. Usually with UI, you need some kind of response that you are interacting with that. And if you don't notice it, that's fine. But when it's not there, it gets a little bit frustrating because it's hard to tell if what you are doing, such as like clicking on a button, is actually happening. Usually you'll have some kind of visual indication of a interaction, such as if you click on the button, it changes color. So like it might look like it's kind of indenting or highlighting when you click on it and then when it releases, it goes back to a normal color. You, adding UI sounds can accent that. So if you think about any kind of interaction you've had with a UI, usually it's like a quick click sort of button. And that just helps the user know that they, yes, they did interact with the button. So they're either, you know, their interaction was either unsuccessful, like the button doesn't do anything, or maybe they need to wait, but they know that the program didn't freeze or they know that the program um, is listening for it. So this week um, we're going to work with this file. It's um, pretty simple and it's already kind of set, like the UI is already set up for you so that when you play it, you walk up to this this um, NPC in your level and it gives you these three buttons, you know, it, and the way that we're going to set this up is so that when we, we click the button, it's going to play a click and then the NPC is going to say something. And I just use the uh, speech, I'm sorry, text to speech generator in audition to make three phrases. You know, these aren't set up right now. So, you know, we can see the, the visual of the click but there's no audio of the click. So, you know, that a little, a little um, click sound effect when we actually click on it will help with that. So let's get into how to set this up. So we need to do this by actually going into the widget. And in this project, um, the widget is in the widgets folder and it's called this W talk box. And that's what is set up for the interaction you know this is what this is where it was designed and this is where we're going to set up the interaction so what we need to do is um i went ahead and already made my sounds so if you haven't done that already you probably want to go ahead and do that hold on let me show you real quick i have three four sound cues i'm um, a click cue a voice one voice two and voice three um, the don't put the click inside with the voice, that's not really a good workflow, just in case um, you're setting up your audio and then your um, director comes back and says, you know what, I really don't like that click sound, can you change it to something that sounds more like this? You don't wanna have to hunt down every single place you put that click in. So we just have a universal click sound that will play when any button is clicked and then we have our three voices that are going to be set up uniquely for the three different buttons. So let's go back to that widget. So in here, what we need to do is um, we are going to first select the button and we need to find its on click event. So we're going to select the button and I know it's selected because it's in green. So don't accidentally click like something like don't click the, you know, the wording make sure you're clicking on the button. We're going to find that on click event, which is right here. And we are going to um, click on this and we get an on clicked, um, <clears throat> excuse me, blueprint that we can set up. So what we want to do is we want to just play our click sound. So we're going to pull this off and we're going to search for play sound at location. 
So with most of the other UI sounds we did, we wanted it to play at a specific place in the level. But with UI sounds, it makes more sense that it should be with the player. So we don't want it to be like at a, you know, we don't want it to sound like it's in space coming from the button. We want to sound like it's coming from the inside the player's head because that's usually how UI sounds sound is, you know, it follows the player. It doesn't just kind of stay in space with that. So we're going to pull off, um, actually we'll just right click and we'll search for get player character. because we want the UI to come like it's inside the, UI, the player's head and we'll get actor location. There it is. So we are going to play a sound inside the player's head. The last thing we need to do is we do need to make sure that we're telling it what sound we want to play and we want to play our click cue or whatever you um, called it. And this should be good to go as far as like the click sound. So I'm going to quickly say, compile and save it and just double check that it is working. It's always good to check as you go along to make sure that you're not sorely mistaken about how things work. So um, let's see if I can arrange this a little bit better because I want to keep this up as I play. There we go. So I'm going to hit play. Walk up. And it was very subtle, but do you hear the click? That means, yeah, these ones aren't hooked yet, up yet. So we are good to go. That one click is working. So we can go ahead and add our phrase to it. And then we'll go and set up two and three as well. So let's hook up the actual phrase to our blueprint. Let's go in and go back to our widget in here. And what we, we're gonna do this kind of in, a, in an easy way. Um, it's gonna get the job done, but we are just going to pull off a delay node from here. And we will add maybe like a 0.5 second delay to like a, maybe a 0.75. We'll do 0.5 and see how that feels. And what this is going to do is we are going to, you know, when we click it, it's going to first play the click sound. It'll then wait half a second. And then we will play another sound at location, which is going to be again in the player's head, but we are going to play our, um, I called mine voice one. Very simple. And this is a preferred way to do this rather than trying to feed that click and just have one cue to play. Just in case we need to change this click sound, it's going to be a lot easier to, to change out sounds if needed with this. So let's compile and save. And let me squish it up just to make sure we'll hit play hello hello and it's now playing our phrase too so let's go ahead and set up the rest of this so and this will you know it's going to be the same exact process so we're going to kind of get a little bit of practice with this so i'm going to go back to designer I'm going to click on phrase two. I'm going to scroll down and close this a little bit. And I'm going to do an on clicked. I am going to find a play set, play sound at location. 
We want to play our click sound. We want to get where our player is. We're going to get the player character and get its location. so that we can play it from the player's head. We then want to, after the click sound plays, we want to delay for half a second. Then we want to play another sound at location, which is going to be at the player's head again. And we want to play our voice two since we are clicking on the second button. Let's compile and save. And let's do that third one real quick. Select, click, play. I know I could probably copy paste, but in case you um, want to see it in the full steps, Get player character, get actor, location, play the sound in the head, play the click sound, and delay it. For half a second, we are going to then play another sound at location from the player's head, and that will be our click three. I'm sorry, voice three. We'll compile and save. Yeah, I probably could have copied and pasted, but just so you saw the actual process of going through it. And that should be good, that should be good to go. Let's try it out. I probably should keep that open. Sorry about that. Uh, let's go to here. Hello. I don't know why it's not showing the trigger. That's weird. But it's working. Do you want to buy something? Goodbye. Hello. Do you want to buy something? Goodbye. So we are good to go. That is all we needed to do for this one. It's a real quick one, but it's a really important one because you need to be implementing UI sound effects. So if you have any questions, again, you can ask your instructor, but that is it for this companion video.